We are going to continue chapter 4 now, starting on page 195. We're going to talk about this ambiguity just a little bit. Um, here, basically, the whole point is, it says you risk creating an ambiguous situation when the compiler cannot figure out which method to use. So in other words, if you're sending in um, to something that's got the same kind of a setup, and the one that they're showing here is where you have uh, two versions that both take one parameter, so which one's it going to use? It's not sure. So you got to make sure you don't fall into that situation. Um, it's also possible that you kind of confuse the order of things, so you want to be careful about that. And that's about all I'm going to say about ambiguity. And this next little thing is creating and calling constructors with parameters. Now you remember that a uh, constructor is something that we use to build an object out of a class. And the examples that we were looking at in the previous video, real briefly, did not have anything inside the parentheses here. So no arguments were being passed and no parameters received. But here we are going to pass in a value and that's what we're referring to right now. All right. So for example, um, this is the generic class file here. And when you call it, there is a int that we create. And then we have a little method here that sets that int to be 999. Now, in the case that we are sending in a value, which is what we're adding, then you need to throw in the ability to pass something in by, by adding this to it. So if you compare the two, nothing here, something here. So this needs to be set up before you can pass in a value. And then notice that because we're passing it in, then we're going to use it to populate this variable to put it here. So here it's hard coded, here it's not. Now you also have the ability to do what you call an, an overload of a constructor. It says overloading constructors provides you with a way to create objects with different initializing arguments or none as needed. So I'm going to highlight that one. So notice what's happening here. Kind of the same way we were doing, uh, you know, one parameter, two parameters, three parameters, and it would automatically pick which one to choose. Here we're doing the same thing. But this time, when we're creating a new employee using that new keyword, it comes in here and it says, are you sending me a value? Well, if you're sending me a value, then we're going to use that value. If you're not sending one, then we're just going to call it 999. OK, does that make sense? So th th there's nothing really weird about that. That's called overloading uh, constructor. So it kind of works the same way. All right, let's try this uh, out in reality here and see how it goes. Uh, here it says, open a new file in your text editor and start the car insurance uh, policy class as follows. So let's grab that. Let's go over to JGrasp, new file. Paste that in. grab this little method here and notice that this method uh, accepts three different values coming in 
So three different parameters. And it takes those and, and reassigns them to the variable names that we have above. So we have a car insurance policy. So think about it in, in conception here. Uh, your policy has a policy number, the number of payments, and the city where you live. So if you are sending those values in, then they will get assigned and then get sent back. Okay, that's part of the construction. Now, we can anticipate what they're going to do next is they're going to use the same method, but this time they're reducing the number of parameters. Right? There's only two of them coming in now. And then, notice what happens to the city. It becomes hard-coded. All right, let's keep moving. Now they're going to send us one parameter. And two fields get hard-coded. So if they send us three, we do this. If they send us two, we do this. If they send us one, we do this. Really, it's as simple as that. And that whole ambiguity thing is, if I had another one that only accepted one, what would it do? It wouldn't know what to do. So you've got to be careful of that, that situation. Uh, we're also going to do a display method. And we're going to put that here at the bottom. So when all the work is done, it's going to output the policy number, number of payments, and the city. And it says add a closing curly brace for the class and save the file as car insurance policy Java. All right, and Kelly was pointing out to us that we can use the Tabify command to save us a whole bunch of time. So I highlighted all of it and chose Tabify. What happens? And why is nothing happening? <laughs> yeah, it should work. Yeah, see, I'm always in the habit in this program where I, I just do this. And maybe uh, that maybe that's what he's pointing out, Kelly. Yeah, is that you, when you tab it, it goes to the spot. Well, I, I guess I'm not too concerned about it because this is pretty straight ahead. But if you really want to make it look nice, you can do stuff like this. See, what I usually do is I just highlight all of it, press tab. You just have to be careful when you are tabbing something. that you have it match up. If you're tabbing just one line, it will actually, like if I do this, it will just delete that. So in that case, if you're just doing one line, you want to put it right in front. Okay, so let's save this. Okay, compile, make sure there's no mistakes. And does it even want us to run it? Yep, it does. Yeah. Oh, we're missing a step, aren't we? Yeah, this is just a class file. <laughs> of course it's not going to do anything. All right. Yeah, so we're at this step. So now we're going to create another new file. Now, think of it in terms of that was our blueprint to create our object. And now we're going to copy this code here. All right, so new class. This one does have a main method. And here it's going to show you that we're going to do the various approaches here, which 
we send in one argument, two arguments, or three arguments. All of them are constructors. So this is our abstract data type, the, one, the class that we just created. We give it a name. We invoke the new constructor method here. We send in whatever arguments we are. We can send in one, we can send in two, we can send in three. And our class file is able to handle any one of those scenarios. OK. So that's what we're doing. Um, and then we're going to display them. And this is kind of a neat little thing. Uh, we haven't really done this much. Um, but what they're doing now is they're using the constructed components. Apparently, I can't tab and talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> right, because now we're going to be creating three new objects. And then we're going to invoke from those objects, because remember, these are copies of this. So when I say first dot display, and notice display is a method in and of itself, because this is a copy of car insurance, it has available to it any of the methods that are inside of it. So when I say first dot display, it's actually calling upon this method. And what does that do? It displays it. It displays whatever is part of that. And because we created a new one, it's going to display the information that's sent in, whether it's two. Well, if it's first, it's going to be this one. If it's second, it's going to be that one. Third, this one. OK, so let's go ahead and save that. Okay, and I think that's all they want us to add here, correct? Correct, yep. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. So you see the correspondence here. Car insurance policy 123, because that's what we sent in. We sent in a 123. When we only send one thing in, and it goes to the, the class file, it is going to look for the one that's got just one parameter. This one's got three. Nope. This one's got two. Nope. This one's only got one. That's the one we want. So it's going to grab the policy number that we're sending in, which was one, two, three. The payments are two, and the city is Mayfield. So there you go. Two payments, Mayfield. All right, so the second example, we send in four, five, six, and four. Four, five, six, and four. Here we say seven, eight, nine, twelve in New Newcastle. Seven, eight, nine, twelve in Newcastle. All right, does that make sense what it's doing? All right, so I'm hoping, I mean, this, these are very simplistic examples, but I'm hoping you kind of get a grasp. So really what we're doing via, you know, through this overloading is we're making it flexible. We're presetting scenarios. So at the very least, we're going to send in a policy number. Maybe we'll be able to send in a policy number and the number of payments they want to make annually. Do they want to play quarterly? Do they want to play pay semi-annually? Do they want to go monthly. And of course, notice that if you don't send a, a, a preferred payment amount, it just automatically sets it to two. Now, most people these days pay their car insurance monthly, right? Which the auto insurance companies love, right? Because they usually upcharge you for doing that. Um, but it used to be that it was just twice a year. That's just how they did it. And it's just been the last, I don't know, decade or two where they've changed that. All right, so that's uh, that you do at exercise, unless they have something more for us to do, which apparently they do. <laughs> All right, uh, so they want us to add um, another one.
and watch what this does and see if actually you can predict it. All right, I'm just going to put it here after the others. But notice what's different about this one. It doesn't have anything inside the parentheses. Mm -hmm. And in our setup here, it has no accommodations for that. We either want one, we want two, or we want three. So let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and try to compile. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it, what it's doing, notice it's going, well, this one doesn't match. This one doesn't match. That one doesn't match. We don't know what to do. Okay. And they tell you it doesn't compile. Now, now, if you want to go ahead and do this little task here, you can. Uh, I'm not really too concerned with it, but what they're trying to show you is all the stuff that's built in. And I, I went through and I checked the URL, so just I, I'll go back in here just to guide you on how to get there. So if you follow the link that they have there, you'll end up here. And then they want you to come over to Java APIs select the version that you're using. We're using 8. You should be. If you have 7, that's fine too. And then they want you to come down here and find uh, print stream, wherever the heck that is. And then once you, once you find it, um, you would complete the tasks that are indicated. All right, so don't worry about that. But if you want to go for it, I'm fine with it. Uh, we need to move on to something else before our time runs out here. All right, so let's talk about this. <laughs> this is a little strange, especially upon first examination. But the whole point of this it, this is just like be like one bad joke after another. Yeah, so the whole point of this is that this uh, is generic. That it refers to self and is generic so you can kind of move it around and, and it works. So, all right. No, Dave. Okay, we got a couple little interruptions there in class. Hopefully, I didn't throw the video off too far. But um, we're at the bottom of page 201, and we're talking about this. And they go through an explanation here in the text um, about why we use this in the first place. Um, the point is mostly because when you start creating classes and you start throwing a bunch of stuff into them, so you have data fields and classes and methods and you do overloads. Um, you might get to the point where you have a huge amount of code with a class. I mean, right now we're working on stuff that's like a half page in length, but it's not unusual to have some that get to be pages and pages. Um, and then you start looking at ways to make the code more efficient. So that's, in essence, what this is all about. It's about efficiency. All right, so when we start to put uh, things into memory, um, we refer to that pointer in memory as uh, reference. So a reference is an object's memory address. And you know we don't really get into the nitty gritty of like where stuff is stored in memory. Um, that's something when I was learning computer science, they actually went through like where it gets stored and how it gets stored and how, do, you know, how we adjust it. Uh, but really all you need to know is that when you create a variable or you create a, an object or whatever you do and it's an abstract data type or, a, or a, you know, a primitive data type, it gets put into memory somewhere. And the computer's got to keep track of it. So if you start having all these different objects and classes and variables 
it all gets loaded in there and sometimes it needs to refer back to itself or refer to a different version of itself and it gets uh, kind of burdened down is the best way to, to put it. So what they did to kind of overcome some of this is they came up with uh, the this reference and it says the reference to an object that is passed to any object's non-static method is called the this reference and it is a reserved word. Okay. Okay, so the reference to an object, so kind of like pointing to the thing in memory, that's passed to any object's non-static method. Now keep in mind that when we are creating a lot of our classes, a lot of them are static because they don't return anything. And here we're working with something um, that is not in that category. All right, so they have a little bit of a, a walkthrough here. It says that this reference is sent to this non-static method as a parameter automatically. So what it's telling you, even though that this is empty, it's this is already present. It says you do not and cannot write code for it. You do not need to use this with employee number. The, the, the thing is, though, it says here, however, you can explicitly use the this reference and it understands it. So really it's saying that these two things are the same, but it's showing you that once you're inside this method here, you can refer to itself with this. This being the whole you know, uh, method. Which employee number? This employee number. What, what's this? This is this. Not, not, I didn't mean to try to be funny with that either. This is what we see on the screen here. All right, so once again, I think probably a great way to see this is to do it in action. All right, so the one thing I'm doing, I'm kind of skipping some of their examples here, but here they're, they have a, a class. Once again, they have a couple of uh, in, integer and a double uh, variables. And then they, they are doing uh, a method called student. We're sending in two arguments. Once we're inside that method, of course, we're sending in student number. We're sending in GPA. And actually, excuse me, this one comes down here, and this one comes down here. And then we're using this and because we are using a constructor, so outside of this class in our main program, we are going to be using a constructor function. So we're going to say student, you know, whatever student, you know, name you come up with, and you're going to say new, and student, and then when it comes back, this refers to the new student that you created because it's relevant to this particular method. We use this because we don't know the name of what it's going back to from here, but it does refer to the one it's dealing with at the moment. And that's really a, a, you know, a good way um, to think about it. This is what I'm dealing with right now. This. You know, that, that's the way I think of it. So I don't know if that helps you at all. All right. So they do go into a little bit of a talk here about how you can use this to make overloaded constructors more efficient. And remember, the overloads are the number of parameters you're sending in, right? So you got two, 
We got one that's a double. We got one that's an int. We got one that's got nothing. All right. Now we're going to take that same thing, and, and you want to carefully look at this, right, where each one of these, this one we send in two, so we have to address two. Here we're only sending in one, but we're still addressing two. Once again, we're only sending in one, and we're switching basically which one we're addressing, and in here, they're just hard-coded. So when we move on to this approach, this one, of course, still needs to have both stated. However, when we drop down here, it's saying this, and it's passing in values. What is it passing in exactly? Where is it passing it to? What is this in this circumstance? This is itself. So what it's actually doing is, in these situations that are, you know, the ones that are other than two things going in, it's coming down here and saying, oh, is this a double? You only got one thing coming in. Is it, is it a double? Well, then I'll take and send 999 and AVG to this, which is me, and then it comes back up here and looks for the one that accepts two, so what it, okay, so let me backtrack a second. What it's doing is, let's say we send in two, it does the first scenario. If let's say we send in one, it picks the one that matches, and when it picks the one that matches, it then sends in two to itself, which of course finds the first one and sets it. Now this seems like, okay, well why are you going to the trouble, right? Because this is a simple example. But what if the input list is, I don't know, 15? 15 different things coming in. Or um, would you want to have to write a list of 15 each time? Or would you rather write one line that has it all in there that calls back onto itself? So in other words, it is self-adjusting. So if, you, if I send in nothing or if I send in one, who knows which one, it automatically configures it in the right way in order to go with the one that it takes all of them and, and, does, and does it. And the way it refers to itself is this. This being what? Well, this is student. Now, student repeats four times here. And so what it does is it looks for the right one and then does it. Hopefully that made some sense. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, let's try this. You do it. Now on page uh, 207, uh, we're going to do the you do it. Um, it wants us to go back to the stuff that we already created. So it says, open the car insurance policy Java file, change the class name to car insurance policy 2, and save it. So let's go ahead and do that. Put a 2 there. And let's do a save as. It keeps taking me back to that same folder, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so now it is saved. It says change the name of the three-parameter constructor from car insurance policy to car insurance and policy two. So um, we are going to. Change all those just to make sure. Make sure we follow the instructions. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. It says change the name of the three parameter constructor. Okay, so notice I didn't do what it said. I just went ahead and did what I wanted to do. The only one that's got three is the first one. See that? So I changed, I added a 2 here, and I added a 2 here. It says replace the constructed that accepts a single parameter with this. So <laughs> with the code you see here, i got to be careful about using the word this now, right? 
when you're doing an example about it. So this is for this one with the single parameter. The one with the single parameter is this one, is the one that I'm looking at, not this one. That would be fitting, wouldn't it? We got this, we got that. Okay, and I'm going to assume they probably are going to have us replace the other one. I'm not really sure until I get to the next page. And that's exactly what they're going to do. You know, and it's probably easier if I just uh, just change the stuff in the middle, but now I'm already on that path, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three parameters, two parameters, one parameter. These two are being switched to the this reference, which is basically calling upon this, the method name that it has. And of course, there's three copies of it. It's overloaded. And because it cannot handle any more than one, it just takes the value that was sent in hard codes the other two and sends them all up to the one that can accept three. Okay, so save the file and compile it. Let's do that. Let's do a save. Let's do a compile. So we got no errors. That's good. And now we're going to move on. It says open the create policies file. It demonstrates yada, yada, yada. And change the class name to create policies two. So let's go ahead and save that. Oh, I'm going to do a save as. Okay, and then does it want us to tweak some more things? I assume. Yes, yeah, so we want to add that in six different places, right? Mm -hmm. And I notice that we want the fourth one here. That's one we, we threw in to make it break, remember? Mm -hmm. So I am removing that. So now it's going to use our own new abstract data type that we created, right, in this file. So car policy two. And then we're going to give it a name. We're going to use the new constructor. And then we're going to send in one parameter. And we're going to send in two parameters. And we're going to send in three parameters. Let's save this once again. I'm assuming we're at the compile. Mm -hmm. So it says, go ahead and execute it. Let's do that. OK, so we got a couple of errors here. Let's figure out what they are. OK, so line one, illegal character. What do we have? In, oh, OK. Yeah, that'll do it. And notice how I threw up the panic flag? That's all it took to make the code break? Yeah. Yeah, so read what it says. OK, so now that's OK. Let's go ahead and run it. Notice it has the same output that it did last time. So we're sending in the same values. They're coming over to, the, to this code to build the new object. If it's got three, it just goes ahead and does this. If it has two, it puts it in the format of three and goes up here and does it. If you send in one, it puts it in the format of three, sends it up here and does it. So really, it does the same thing. It's just that here, instead of having uh, three lines of code, we have it down to one line of code. Think of the efficiency if there's, like I said before, like 10 items or 15 items, all of a sudden you're really condensing your, your code down quite a bit. So, 
efficiency. Yes, it is good for efficiency, no doubt. All right, so we're up through step eight, and it says, uh, number nine, you can further reduce the code by changing the single parameter constructor to the following, which removes the constant may field <coughs> from the constructor call. So now think about what this is going to do. The single one is going to send to the one that takes two, which is then going to send it to the one that takes three. Right. All right, so what they want us to do here is just change that to this num two. So basically strike that part. We're going to save it, compile it, and let's go back and once again run this, and it still works. Unfortunately, that's as far as we can get this evening. Um, so if you get a chance, try to work through the rest of the chapter here, uh, starting with static fields. There's not really a lot of material left. A uh, little bit more you do it, but not that much more. And um, I, just a reminder for those uh, listening to this, we do have spring break next week, so class will resume. Uh, so you got basically you have extra time to do your homework, which is probably a sigh of relief. So there's nothing... Nothing due next week, um, so it's kind of it's kind of like having a little vacation, All right? Not, and this video ends here. <laughs>